Hi, welcome to the bathtub. This is uh, the master bather, uh, Scott Bradfield. Be careful how you say that. And we're talking today, we're doing a few of them in a row, so that's why I'm wearing the same crumpled t-shirt. And uh, the place looks exactly the same as it did last week. Uh, we're doing we're, we're going doing a little more Flan O'Brien. We started doing Flan O'Brien and R.A. Lafferty. We're kind of bouncing back and forth. And uh, uh, for no, other, no reason I could think of, except I just really wanted to read more Flan O'Brien. We've already talked about his most famous book, which is At Swim Two Birds. It was the one novel published when he was a young, youngish man, and it received, uh, it received, uh, I don't want to use cliche as plaudits. It received uh, uh, high marks from the likes of great, the great Graham Greene, one of the great writer readers of all time. There's a guy who spent time in the bathtub, Graham Greene, one of the great all time writers and readers, and he always knew the good books when they came down the down the road, and he 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 noticed how good At Swim Birds was, and At Swim Two Birds. And Joyce, James Joyce, actually saw it and liked it. Um, and I wouldn't tr trust Joyce's opinion as much as I would Graham Greene's. And it, the book died to death. It sold like 250 copies and uh, disappeared. Uh, then uh, Flann O'Brien went on to uh, write mainly. He became he was a civil servant. This is a, this is a fairly interesting little biography. You can get pretty cheap on uh, eBay uh, from 20 years ago or so. Lots of photos, lots of pictures, lots of renderings of. Lots of pictures of D Dublin and, and Flann O'Brien. And so he was a civil servant. It was a really horrible job. And he uh, he started writing a column. As, and I, I'm not going to try pronouncing the name. Miles Nagagopalin or something. Him and a few other writers were doing this. And those are supposed to be quite brilliant. I haven't read those, but I'm, I'm interested. And it wasn't until late in life. He, and he wrote the book that we, we love here in the bathtub. One of the great, the high watermarks for bathtub reading is The Third Policeman. Which, which was his second novel, and he couldn't get it published. It is one of the all-time great, brilliant, fun bathtub reads. It is hilarious. It's brilliant. It's twisted. It's complicated. You got to pay. We talked about uh, Joanna Russ last week, and, and NKS died. Um, it's much funnier than NKS died, but it, uh, which is actually sort of funny. But it's it requires a lot of attention, and it rewards a lot of attention, and. Uh, the Third Policeman disappeared and was never published in his lifetime. And he didn't really write another novel to publish until late in life. And that was in the late, in the late 50s and early 60s. Now, I'd always sort of uh, incorrectly assumed that he kind of gave up on writing fiction. But late in his life, he wrote this book called The Hard Life. And it's always been on my shelf, kind of on the side. And I've always sort of thought, oh, it's just going to be kind of a minor book that he put together near late, late in his life. And um, he, he published it while he was still alive. He published a couple of other books, well, one of which we'll, be, we'll, we'll probably read eventually called The Doll Key Archive, which I haven't read yet. And again, I, I sort of thought, well, this would be kind of okay. I loved The Hard Life. I would really recommend it. I think, as I said in the past, at Swim Two Birds, which is considered the masterpiece, I, I liked it. I'm not. I think the third policeman's much better, but the hard life. I would put this above ads. I I enjoyed it more than Ad Swim Two Birds. I love this book. It's very different from the previous books. It's slightly more realistic, so the actual narrative is a little easier to to, to follow. The premise is that these two young men, uh, their mother dies, and they go to live with this crazy uncle named Kalapi, Mister Kalapi. And they, they, the, and it, he does just one scene after another. These two boys moving in with this crazy old man named Kalapi. Now, um, Kalapi lives with a woman named Mrs. I want to say Mrs. Crotty. He lives with a woman named Mrs. Crotty, who's actually his second wife. But he refers to her as Mrs. Crotty because her first husband's name was Crotty, and she was originally Mrs. Crotty. So he married her. He still keeps calling her Mrs. Crotty. Uh, Kalapi is this old fat drunk. Like a lot of the characters in in in, uh, in O'Brien, he's full of bullshit. He spends long sections of this novel sitting around with his friend Father Fart. You know, it's, there's lots of broad comedy in, in him and very smart, complicated humor. And they sit around talking about the Jesuits and the history of Jesuits and the Catholicism and all of me. And then they argue all sorts of weird ideas. And, and Calapi has all sorts of crazy. Things. He, he he doesn't seem to work. He seems to just sit around coming up with crazy ideas. And he lives with a, wife, a daughter named Amy, Annie. 
There's a girl named Annie. I'm still drinking the same martini from the last two episodes. And uh, Annie has been living at home basically waiting on this old man and her, and her mother for years. And, uh, and then there's two boys who move in with her. I forget the boys' names. One of them, one, the, the narrator is first person, uh, Finbar. I think his name is Finbar. He's got a brother who he just refers to as the brother. And the brother has com comes up with all sorts of crazy ideas to make money. And the first one is he teaches himself to, to become a tightrope walker. He's always tying up ropes all over. He's tying up wires all over the place and through the house and upstairs. upstairs. And then he goes into publishing. He starts publishing books, um, which are seem to be facsimiles of books, uh, whether he's publishing the, he's really publishing Cervantes or he's putting together, cobbled together versions. And then he goes off to England. The brother's hilarious. Goes off to England to start a university, which teaches, I think, everything from, you know, um, from how to manage cut cutlery to, to to Polish sausages, sausage making or something. He just runs this university and, and sends them letters, trying to whenever the the, the uncle gets sick. Um, I, I don't give too much more than that. It's hilarious. It's and it's also kind of based in this kind of affectionate. You, there's a sort of an affection for this family, and you kind of feel something for this family. At one point. And I think I've just done it again. I think I've just lost my place. I'm really terrible. This place, this the worst run lectures I've ever seen. I was gonna read a little part because at one point, Calopi, the the crazy old man they live with, he starts to get sick. The brother sends him some medicine from London. I think it's called dense water or something, or gravid water. And he and it, and it, this long, hilarious explanation. Nobody does bullshit academic fake science talking better than Blair O'Brien. This guy sends these letters explaining why this water would make the old man feel better. And then that old man gets incredibly fatter and they, they decide he's going to die. So the brother decides to take him off to uh, to meet the Pope. It's only about 10 pages. The journey's 10 pages. It's absolutely hilarious. Anyway, I will read just a little passage here. This is about the brother writes a letter to Finbar. And as he's off on this trip to uh, to meet the Pope. It's on page 103 for those reading along at home. And again, you have to get the old Picador edition with the Stedman illustrations. You can't have another copy. Our voyage to Ostia on the Moravia was without much incident and for me quite enjoyable. I haven't been so drunk for years, though an Englishman I chummed up with went a bit further. He fell and broke his leg. Col Colopi who never showed any sign of sickness, drank plenty too, but spent most of his time in bed. Thank God we had decent beds and not those frightful bunks. First, the job of trying to dress him on a tilting floor was at least an hour's job for Father Fart, a steward, and myself. <laughs> so he had to dress the, <laughs> the floor inside. Once dressed, he found movement on shipboard almost impossible. I had to give another steward not tips, but a massive salary to lend a special hand, but gangways and steps were nearly insuperable. I used to bring people down to the bedroom to drink and talk with him. He was not in the least depressed by his situation, and the sea air certainly had a good effect. Father Fart rather let us down. He soon found there were four members of his own order on board and was huddled with him for most of every day. He came down to Calapi only in the evening and for some reason has refused all drinks. He is in very good shape and temper, though, and is now staying at a Jesuit house here. He comes faithfully to the hotel every morning at eleven. Calapi is much easier to handle and dress on terra firma. And they let after off the boat, they can get him dressed easier. Um, if you if you tried at Swim Two Birds and didn't quite get into it, or if you read um, the Third Policeman and found a little took a little while to kind of understand what was going on, I really recommend this book. I think it's a hilarious book. I loved it. I really really enjoyed myself for the past few days, and will now read anything else I can read of, of Flann O'Brien. He can't write a boring sentence. Even even when he hadn't written a novel in 20, 30 years, which is when he wrote The Hard Life. Good book. Get the Stedman illustration. Uh, Stedman, the Stedman illustrated cover, and you'll have a wonderful book on your shelf. Bye.